What's going on guys, it's Matthew here with Gadget University and I'm here with a review for the Samsung Infuse 4G. Now this did release on May 15th, 2011. I know I'm a little late on getting on the review, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys uh, some of the, the coolest things about this device. Now, this is uh, AT&T's newest 4G device, which means that it does take advantage of the HSDPA Plus network. Um, it does allow download speeds up to 200, uh, excuse me, 21 megabits per second. So this is technically the fastest uh, 4G device on AT&T. Now with that said, uh, it did come with a 4.5 inch Super AMOLED screen. As you can tell, it is massive compared to the business card, um, the screen size that is. Now, looking from the front, you're thinking, wow, this phone is huge. I want you to take a look at the side. Now this phone is approximately nine millimeters thin. So you're looking at a device that is actually slightly thicker than the iPhone 4. So if you love the design of the iPhone 4, I think that you would love this as well. Um, just another comparison, uh, this is the Droid X2, and this is 12 millimeters thick, and a 4.3 inch screen. And as you can tell, at its thinnest point, it is still thicker than the Infuse 4G. We'll get into some more comparisons uh, at another time. But, now it is running Android 2.2, um, it does have the TouchWiz 3.0 software on there, so you are getting you know, access to all the normal widgets that you are used to on the Samsung devices. Now the uh, processor is a single core Hummingbird 1.2 gigahertz processor. So it is uh, still a single core device in, in a day and age where a lot of devices are coming out with dual cores, uh, dual core processors. But I would not uh, look past this device. It is very, very fast and is very uh, responsive. Now, you still get your normal app drawer and uh, that looks kind of like an iPhone, so if you're used to that, then that works out great. But the real story about this device is the camera quality, which is the eight megapixel rear camera with a LED flash, and the front uh, camera, which is a 1.3 megapixel uh, for your uh, video chat and uh, self-portraits and things like that. But this screen, and I cannot elaborate enough, this screen is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, when you are doing things like browsing the web, let's go ahead and pull up a web page here. Let's we'll zoom in a little bit. When you're browsing the web, I mean, you see everything. It is beautiful, it is fast, scrolling, uh, you see pinch to zoom is very good we're gonna zoom into a headline here and you see you can see that text clear and the lines that you're seeing is actually the the design on the website don't don't uh, fret there now you're not gonna really be able to see the super quality of this this uh, screen um, and without really holding it in your hand um, one of the biggest things that I've loved doing on this phone is watching uh, movies or TV shows. So I have a couple episodes of The Office on here and I wanted to give you guys a quick demonstration on how great movies look. Uh, actually, let's watch a trailer instead. Here's the Fast Five trailer. I am, nobody, I am not endorsing this movie, so... But I want you to see how clear this is. I mean, this is high definition in your pocket. One thing about these video players is pretty cool. You can actually hit the power button. Let's go ahead and turn this down a little bit. You can actually hit the power button and it locks the device. So if you see here, I can't do anything to get out of this. So if you're you don't want to give your movie to your give this to your child or something and you don't want them to get out of it, I find this really cool that you can actually hit the power button, lock the device, and nothing can be done. Um, you can change the volume, of course but you can't pause, play it, or anything like that. Um, now, it does support 5.1 uh, virtualization uh, surround sound. Now that is through a headphone or if you plug it in, in a, uh, like a surround sound system or uh, speaker system through the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that is located at the top. Um, I cannot express enough how great these are to watch movies. Like, all Galaxy S devices are, are very great, um, including the Droid Charge. Um, same experience, 4.3 inch screen, front facing camera. Um, great movie watching. 
Now, one thing I did notice is that uh, because you are getting this large screen, um, you are expecting horrible battery life. Not the case here. Now, this device does come with a fairly large battery. Uh, it is a 1750 milliamp an hour battery. Now, I averaged about 14 hours on this. So, phones are getting very large, and everybody's like, our hands are getting bigger. Why are these phone screens getting so large? Um, battery life is still going to suck. Uh, Samsung has found a very nice common ground with the battery life in these large screen phones. Um, the Enfuse 4G and the Charge both get outstanding battery life, better than their competitors. Uh, so, uh, kudos to Samsung on finally getting a great phone out there without sacrificing battery life. Now, I do a lot of RSS reading, keeping up on the news and things like that. And so if you're an ebook reader and you like uh, maybe you need a large screen on the go, uh, I think it this screen size will be perfect for you. Uh, I say this because, for example, let me go to um, the Gadget University uh, RSS reader. Now let's see here. You see like the text is very clear. The screen is so large. You can scroll through our news and you know click on it and you can see things like this. If you want to share this with a friend, uh, you can touch it and you know do all that stuff. Now this is not an included app with the phone. Um, I'm just showing you some of the great apps that go great with this uh, large screen. Um, like I said, web browsing is awesome on this phone as well. Um, overall call quality, I did a, uh, a, a couple calls on there I didn't have any problems even in the AT&T's network I know a lot of you guys have a lot of complaints about them but uh, they're actually very great in my area uh, so if uh, if you are looking for a phone on AT&T if I was still with AT&T uh, this would, would actually be the phone I would get um, I know a lot of uh, people aren't a fan of TouchWiz um, me either but there are launchers out there there are apps out there that you can change just about every aspect of this phone so if you don't want launch I'm excuse me if you don't want touch with on your phone um, you can do quite a bit to get rid of most of it um, so that's not really a, a uh, deal breaker there now also with this device because yeah the battery's low um, also with this device uh, because you're getting such a slim form factor uh, you may be wondering, you know, how does it feel in the hands? Is it cheap? Does it have the normal uh, plasticky feel that Samsung has? Samsung phones typically have, and the answer to that is no. Uh, let me go ahead and zoom back out a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, the answer to that is no. Uh, Samsung, with the Joy Charge and this phone, have I think they've upgraded their plastic. I know it sounds dumb, but these plastic materials are much better. They're much more solid. They're much more. They feel great in the hands. Uh, let's pull off the battery back. Uh, I'm going to show you something here. Now, the battery back is, once again, just like uh, most manufacturers are doing nowadays. They're doing this really thin plastic now. Um, you're getting a, you, know, you get your SIM card slot, and you have a 2 gigabyte um, included SD card. I know you're saying, oh, that's really small. You also get 16 gigabytes included inside of the phone. So you're getting a total of about, maybe about 17, 18 gigabytes of actual usable storage. So it's pretty good for a phone this size, and it's priced at $199, so you're actually getting more of a value than the iPhone 4. Um, also, I wanted to show you some things is the uh, camera. Now, the camera is an 8 megapixel shooter, so let's move this out the way. Eh. One cool thing is it won't let you use the camera if the battery is too low. That is a feature of TouchWiz. Um, that's not an Android feature, but um, maybe annoying to some, but it's actually pretty good um, for most. It does not let you do things like watch movies and things like that after your body, your your body, after your battery gets so low. Uh, it actually uh, preserves your battery for actually making phone calls, which is what a cell phone is for. Um, so. Um, I'll actually have to show you guys the camera quality later. I actually upload some videos, some 720p test uh, test videos and things like that. Uh, well, let's see. Now, with the widgets on the screen, you do get things like you know live widgets that you can scroll up and down. You do get your your social feed as well as uh, access to like Twitter and Facebook updates from your uh, friends. Now, included apps with this phone, you do get the Media Hub app. You do get uh, My AT and T. Um, TouchWiz in general has a lot of apps that they throw in there that are different from other phones. You got Task Manager, you got a voice recorder, you got a, a specific video player application. 
Um, you have a text, a writing glow, which is a like a note taking application, which is pretty cool. Uh, you also get a, a a installation of Quick Office for your office needs like uh, Excel, uh, Word, things like that. Uh, you have a mini diary. Um, I'm not sure who would want to use that, but <laughs> if you want to blog or do like a mini journal or diary on your phone, you have access to do that here. Uh, here's a uh, memory, excuse me, a memo. Uh, this is more of a note taking application. This write and go application allows you to write things and then at that point you can decide what you want to do with it. So if you want to email it or post it or do whatever, you can do that there. Um, you have a news and weather hub, which allows you to uh, basically pull in RSS feeds from your favorite news sources. Media Hub actually um, is a DLNA uh, supported software where you can actually stream your media wirelessly to TVs um, using the DLNA software. Um, I'm sorry, not Media Hub. It, media Hub is for downloading media, obviously. I'm sorry. And you also get a included uh, voucher for that. Um, what I was referring to is AllShare. AllShare is where it uses that DLNA uh, software to stream out to your TVs or other DLNA. Uh, it's compatible devices um, in the box. Um, I did not tell you what you got in the box, but in the box you do get a, a, a USB cable charger and you do get your battery as well. Um, you also get an HDMI adapter. Now you're asking, hey, where the, where's the HDMI port? This actually uses what is called a MHL port. The HDMI is actually combined with the micro USB. So this is a dual use port charges your phone, syncs your phone to your computer, and it also functions as an HDMI port. Now this dongle, let me go ahead and pull that out so you guys can see it. I have not opened it up yet because I do not plan on using it yet. I like to keep my accessories new looking. This is what it looks like. So what you do is you plug this into the phone. Let me go ahead and move that out of the way. You plug this into the phone, you plug your power cord into here, or your SIG cable, and then you plug your HDMI here. Now this, is a, this allows you to play things like Angry Birds and movies and things like that directly on here. So think of it this way, you go to Media Hub, you download a movie, and you want to watch it on your TV. Use this thing right here and you just have yourself a portable media player. Well guys, this has been my review of the Infuse 4G. Um, I hope you liked it. If you have any more questions about this device, let me know. Um, I will get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, if you want any comparison videos with any other devices I have, I have reviewed or any future devices that are coming out, uh, leave me a comment and I will see what I can do about doing that. Alright, you guys take care and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.